Here's a poem by William Blake. I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of woe, in every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, the mind-forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. But most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlot's curse blasts the newborn infant's tear and blights with plagues the marriage hearse. And uh, this is a poem called London um, by William Blake, written at the end of the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century. So here we've got an image um, of worldly success in London is actually a place for Blake of gloom and doom. Uh, you start in the first stanza. Uh, I wonder, I'm, I'm, I'm walking, but I mean, you know, when we listen to it, I, I wonder or I wonder, I, I marvel uh, at what is going on in these chartered streets, these places of rules, these urban, these urban streets, and even the river follows rules, restrictions placed by law. There's sorrow in the streets. Look at the um, second, third and fourth stanzas of darkness, distress, misery and general melancholy. The church, we, we, we see that should be an image of belief and hope, is blackened. Uh, marriage, which should be an image of belief and hope, um, has become a hearse, a, a, a funeral carriage. Um, and why? Because of the because of the imprisonment of the mind, mind-forged manacles, uh, these handcuffs which people have made for themselves. We, we see it in people's pained expressions, sorrow in the streets. We see corruption uh, of good freedom. Um, uh, everything is bound up in progress and in industry and in victory in war. The Napoleonic Wars had just been won by Britain, but it's the soldier begging uh, by the blood-stained palace walls, this, this, uh, this contrast. Um, and in terms of form, we've got uh, four stanzas, four quatrains, uh, very, very clear rhythm, iambic tetrameter, di-da, 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 and um, very clear rhyme, A, B, A, B. Um, but... Uh, uh, look at those places where Blake imposes a caesura, a break in the line, where he runs the line on. His, his use of enjambment, you see it also in Tiger, Tiger. And his really bold images, his metaphors. Um, uh, when, when, when you look at these, when you're writing a good essay, you should be thinking about how Blake uses these poetic devices to emphasise the ideas in his poem. In, um, in the third stanza, look particularly at the acrostic. He's got the word here written in the first letters of each line down that stanza. And not something that you would hear when you're just listening to the poem, but something you would definitely see. And remember, Blake uh, illustrated his own poems. He did these amazing um, illustrated editions of his poems and printed them laboriously in multiple colours. Um, and uh, the, the poetry often, often Blake is uh, Blake's images, uh, uh, Blake's ideas are about um, the destruction of the spirit by the physical universe, but also the destruction of the innocence of childhood by um, an adult world. This is one of his themes, and and and, and of course, we, uh, one of the ideas here, one of the images here, is of chimney sweeps, often children, uh, and then harlots, prostitutes. Um, so you've got. Uh, prostitutes mixed up with marriage, mixed up with newborn uh, infants um, and with sexual disease, blighted, blighted, note that word, uh, to, to, to be struck by disease. Um, so this is a very, a very negative image of a place that should be a place of progress. It's a poem that I think probably we should um, mark in the present age. So there we are, very, very quickly, Blake's London.